Gotta get it in every day now. Simply because I'm starting to believe that the enemy doesn't take any breaks when he's messing with you. The enemy doesn't take any breaks when he's coming at us. So why should we take any breaks when we're trying to come for him? That's how, that's, that's, how I, you know, that's how I'm doing it right now. So if this joker is coming at me every day, then perhaps I need to start coming at him every day. So no breaks in the word. Nope, no breaks, no pauses. Um, just got to make something happen. Now, first of all, first of all, I start speaking. Um, looked on the news, heard on the news last night in Maine, state of Maine. I want to been in Maine one time, went up there. I was driving, you know, truck driving, drive, drove up there. Um, some uh, person um, controlled by the enemy, controlled by the demonic force, uh, went into a bowling alley, I believe it was, and shot up 16 people. I think, I think it's the 16 people that passed away, all from some of that died just walking in a bowling alley, killing people. Um, it's a lot of um, mental health issues going on. It's a lot of um, glory to God, politics going on. It's a lot of people profiting from other people's pain. Um, and oftentimes, I think families, families are tired of hearing we're praying for you. They want some action done. They want something done. It's our urge those who are in power to make changes to different laws please consider doing so how much money can you make <laughs> I mean wow wow I saw I pray oh I love this stuff I, I shouldn't drink it but it gives me some energy in Jesus name but I'm praying for those still praying for wars and rumors of wars still praying for those who are going through um difficult, tremendous financial uh, times. Um, some, sometimes things are spoken in my spirit. I always will, will be obedient to what is what is what is being said to me. <laughs> it is amazing how oftentimes when we um, say, well, it, when it's something we don't want to do, we say, well, I'll pray about that, or God probably didn't say that, so I'm not definitely looking to that. When it's something you don't want to do, you know, if God was telling you, and you're saying, you praying to the Lord, how do I come out of debt? And the Lord says, well, give your way out. Start giving. Start giving more. Start giving consistently. You can get out of there. You'll never be back again. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So I was thinking maybe I can hit the lottery. Thinking maybe I can... Perhaps got an uncle that had came to some money or some uh, thinking of me want to send me some money or something like that, and and you, that's what we want to hear. We don't want to hear God say, "Well, uh, give your way out." <laughs> that's right. That's how you're gonna come out of this thing. You're gonna you're gonna persevere by uh, being disciplined in your giving, in your fasting, in your praying, and the different things. Like, whoa, wait a minute, oh, Lord, I was thinking you just gonna just just give me the money. I was, I was thinking you are gonna cause me to. Uh, the you know, um, go to the lake and, and catch the first fish and open up the fish mouth and there's a piece of money, right? I thought I was gonna find me a st stash of money on the road somewhere. I th that's how I thought it was gonna bless me. Gonna have an angel come down and, and flap his wings and flap away my debt. Nope. When, and we would accept answers like that, right? Mm -hmm. But if God telling you, well, give your way out, then. A lot of people don't hear that. They're like, wait a minute, give my way out. What do you mean give my way out? Or, or love more. Spend more time with your family. Spend more time in prayer. Spend more time and and humble yourself and make some calls and different things. You're like, what? No, 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 no. God ain't saying that. So right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we do believe God is saying that. Oftentimes we don't want to do something that causes us uh, to be challenged. Because it's something we don't want to do. But um, if God is telling you to love your enemy, you saying to yourself, well, God, I, I don't have much friends. And God says to you, well, you, you're not showing yourself friendly. That's why you don't have enough friends. 
It will do. So you have to be careful. <laughs> Especially when you're you praying. Especially when you're praying. Especially when you're fasting. Especially when you're doing some things of that sort. And you're saying, God, bless. God, heal. God, deliver. God, set free. And you can't, you know, you're asking God to do that. And you ask him to do that, right? But you um, find yourself, you know, <laughs> the answers that God will give you to how to do this thing, you know, is perhaps something that you don't want to do. Ooh, when, when the Lord gives you, makes you do something, has you do something that you don't want to do. My God. God is able to make you stand. God is able to bless you. God is able to deliver you. God is able to, God is able to make you Stand global shakarabaha. If there's somebody right now that has wronged you, glory to God, or you felt you was done wrong, forgive them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not saying go back and hang out with them. I'm not saying take them to dinner. I'm not saying, you know, I'm saying forgiveness. Forgiveness is better than darkness. Forgiveness is better than being um, bottled up. Sometimes you can be unforgiving. Sometimes you can be full of hate for someone. And the more you're trying to hate that person, that person is not the one being tormented. It's you. You're the one who's being uh, messed up and jacked up and glory to God and want people to feel a certain type of way and all that. No, you ain't got to do all that. Forgive. Mm -hmm. I can't say forget because oftentimes we tell people you need to forgive and forget. Sometimes you can't forget. Sometimes your mind, your flesh, your mind it may be stuck there but you can't change how you're reacting to what happened to you and what's going on. Let me show you something in the book of John chapter number 7 I believe. It's been an interesting morning already. Mm -hmm. Life, I, I think the last time I spoke to you, I was talking about how um, your testimony will be tested. You have testimonies out there. And your testimony will be tested. So, and is, oh, it is what I don't know what it want to do. <laughs> They don't know whether it want to be hot or cold. I feel you. Some of these people in these streets, they don't know what they want to do. <laughs> Woo! But anyway, I was talking about how God will, in, in life, will test your testimony. You say, uh, you've been delivered from hate. Well, here comes the person that you hated in your face. You say you've been delivered from um, alcohol and drugs. Well, here comes somebody putting alcohol and drugs in your face. Uh, you've been delivered from... Uh, Pornographies, or sex, or different things. Well, here comes that one ex you just can't say no to. Here, here, right here in your face. Boom, bam. Ready. So, oftentimes, your testimony will be tested. Glory to God. And that is one thing that, um, in the book of Psalms 34. So, I wasn't going to take you to John, but Psalms um, 34. So I need to read that again because um, I'm going to read it again simply because that's one of my favorite verses of scripture in Psalm 34. And this is where you saw all go down. But Psalm 34 on verse 1 says this, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, um, that, like I said, that's a testimony. When I last time I was with you, I said that's a testimony, and you gotta understand that um, when you speak like that, when you say, "I will bless the Lord at all times," and most definitely you should, most definitely we should bless the Lord at all times. We should rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. 
What I'm saying is life, though, will come along and test your testimony and see if you really mean what you say. <laughs> uh, if your testimony is, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold, then, okay, well, let's get you broke and let's give you Jesus and let's see if you'll be just be satisfied with that. Sometimes you got to watch what you say. Sometimes you really got to watch what you say. Oftentimes you got to watch what you say. Oftentimes you got to realize that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of. That means that in life, you're going to have whatsoever you say. And whatsoever you say has been thought of out here. So in other words, look at around you right now. Look at the company you keep. The women and the men that you keep. The, the things in your life is all a result of what was in here, of what you have spoken. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And my God, in the devotion, and some of you didn't even know that right now. And because now that you know that, you're going to start speaking and thinking differently. Yeah, some of you are feeling my spirit right now. You're going to look yourselves in the mirror. You're going to say, oh, I'm better than this. I'm better than where I'm living at. I'm better than the job I'm on. I'm better than the income I got. I'm better than uh, the folk I've been hanging, the things I've been allowing in my life, and the things I'm. No, I'm 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 much more better than 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 that. And so I, I do believe that um, that when you begin to speak that, shama do koba. When you begin to speak that, I do believe life for you will begin to change. Um, let, let me show you something in Genesis chapter one. And I pretty much everybody probably know Genesis chapter 1 and what goes on with that. If you don't, ooh, Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The earth was out forming void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, God said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light was, it was good. And God divided the light for the darkness. What I'm saying is, your God speaks and things happen. <laughs> what God spoke came to pass, but God had whatsoever he spoke. Shaboko, whatsoever God said, that's what he was the results he got. Even the principle now is set now in Genesis. Now, whatsoever we speak should happen, is going to happen, good or bad. Negative or whatever it is. Oftentimes, what we speak is up here. And, and don't get me wrong. You can't speak without talking. There's some people right now that are speaking without even moving their lips. And they're, because they have so many thoughts in their head. And your thoughts are speaking. And you're speaking on the inside of you. And you're saying to yourself, boy, if I had that, if I had him, if I had her, or boy, if I had this job, if I had that job, you know what, I should do, I should go to school. I should maybe not go to school. I want to pass this class. I'm not, different things are being thought of in your head. It, different things are being thought of in your spirit. And so right now in the bush, in the name of Jesus, start speaking differently. Start thinking differently. So right now, in the name of Jesus, the results of your life are what you've been thinking for your whole life. I wonder what will happen for the next 31 days, a whole month now. We speak differently and think differently about ourselves. Let me show you something else. That um, it's all about. The devil is a lie. Someone tried to come in here and attack me in Jesus' name. You know, I'm, I'm from the dirty south, baby. I don't play that much. Let me show you something in Jesus' name in John chapter 14. Yeah, I just saw Barack Obama with that thing. Let me see uh, John chapter 14. <laughs> yeah, you remember that interview that they was having with Barack Obama? And I guess it was a fly or something flying around. And Barack in mid interview, pow, pop that thing out, got him out the dog on way. It's different from Pence though. Pence, Pence just let the fly just sit on him. Pence is like, oh, I ain't doing it. <laughs> it's the, well, Mike Pence, when Mike Pence was doing the interview, and that fly flew right on him, 
You can't tell me that man didn't feel that fly on his head like that. But hey, he, he held his ground though. He just said, I'm just gonna see it. Then just doing this whole interview. And that fly sat there almost that whole interview on his head. Anyway, that's a story for another time. Go over to go. Mm -hmm. Let me show up in John 14, baby. Shalo do go. Glabo do ho la basse. John chapter 14. I'm telling you now, death and life is in the power of the tongue. You're going to have whatsoever you say. Whatsoever you say, that's what you're going to have. Whatsoever you're thinking, is going to manifest in your natural life. Whatsoever you're saying, whatsoever you're thinking. And you've been thinking lately, I'm not, there's no way I can come out of this. There's no way I su 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 survived this. Mm -hmm. You've been thinking some negative thoughts. Mm-hmm. But I say today that the thing is going to turn around for you. But it's going to turn around for you up here first. And then you're going to see it on the outside. Let me show you something right now in Jesus' name. Shabo do kuba see. So, this is John chapter 14 and verse number 1. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house and many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that you may be also. And whether I go, you know, in the way you know. Jesus talking to his disciples, letting them know, hey, I'm getting ready to be crucified. I'm getting ready to depart this earth. I'm getting ready to go. But sorrow has filled your hearts because of this. But he says, let not your heart be troubled, and let it, let it be afraid. Watch this now. I'll watch this now. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest. And how can we know the way? Shama, we're going to get somewhere in a minute. <laughs> and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Can't get there. You can't get to God through Buddha. Can't get there through your good works. Can't get there through. Uh, much money you're given can't get that through your ancestry can't get that through your national uh, who, who, who your descendants is the only way to god is through jesus christ so let, let us go let us go deeper though let's go deeper if you have known me you should have known my father also watch this now what he says from henceforth you know him and have seen him Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it and it suffice of us. Philip, another one of his disciples said, the first disciple said, well, it was Thomas said, Lord, where are you going now? How can we know the way? The second disciples now are saying, Lord, show us God. Show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Here's what Jesus said to him. Have I been long time with you and yet has I not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Jesus said, if you seen me, you've seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Jesus Christ letting you know, letting the world know exactly who it is. He's letting you know exactly who he is. You can't get to God except through me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Say us out then, show us the Father. Can we go deeper into this thing? Because I want to show you something about your tongue. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now, Jesus, right now, is telling him, if you're looking for God, he's only inside of me. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. You can't get to God. By, by bypassing Jesus. The only way you can get to God is through Jesus. Because once you go through him, you're going to find out something. That God is actually in Christ. Jesus Christ is God. To the glory of God the Father. But let me I'll just leave that alone. Believe me that I am in the Father and Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sakes. Verily be I say unto you that he that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall they do. Because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, 
that what I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Did you see that? Jesus just said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. That's what he said, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's why we always pray in Jesus' name. Because, because, because the works that Jesus is doing, glory to God, the works that Jesus is doing, how do you call that by? He says, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go unto my Father. He said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. In order to ask something, you got to open up your mouth. Did you know that? <laughs> it's what you're speaking. What have you been praying about? And it's a lot of prayers out there. I'm not going to tell anybody how to pray and what to pray for but I do know it's a lot of prayers out there. And a lot of things that people have gotten as a result of their prayers. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the Father, whom the world cannot receive because he see of him not, not to know of him, but you know him. He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now watch this, now watch this, now watch this. <laughs> so in order to receive, you have to ask. In order to ask, you got to open up your mouth. Eba shokoraba. Do you agree with that? Let me show you something in Mark. We're just trying to get our language together. We're just trying to get our mind right. I'm just trying to, get, we're just trying to get, you know, some things from the Father that we thought we couldn't get. Yet, we're just trying to get um, some folks want a better situation for themselves. Mark chapter 11. Some folks want a better situation. They want a better marriage. They want a better house. They want a better car. They want a better job. They, 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 you just want better. You just want greater for yourself. And what the Lord is speaking to us is, oftentimes, is that what we have now is a result of what we thought up here and spoken with this. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall, shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you want your situation change, start thinking differently up here and start speaking different with this. With this. And then actions will start happening. It has to start up here first. I can't talk unless it starts up here first. Shama, my, now my brain is telling me to talk. But even now, my brain didn't tell me to do that, what I just spoke. <laughs> but it was the Spirit of God that, that takes over me, and I'm able to do that. Now watch this. Mark chapter 11, around verse number 22 says this. Well, I'm reading verse 20. In the morning, they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree with thy cursive is withered the way. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Now watch this now. This is going to motivate. This is just motivating me. This, I didn't even know I was going. I was getting ready to talk about John. But this is just motivating me. I hope it's motivating you to speak differently about our situation. Ah, shit. They call la ba ba do call la ba. You're going to have to start speaking like God about your situation. See, God calls those things that are not as though they already are. Shama. See, so that means that you don't have to see the results right now, but you do have to start speaking it right now. And once you start speaking it, you'll see the results change. You know? Now watch this. Um, he said, have faith in God. For he said, watch this, what Jesus said. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, there it is again. You got to say something. I'm going to need you to say something, baby. Come on now. He says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. My God in him. Whatsoever you say, that is what you're going to have. According to Jesus. 
He said, now let me read it again. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, no matter who it is, you ain't got me no pastor to pray. You ain't got me no bishop to pray. You ain't got me no uh, choir member to pray. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things he said shall come to pass. He shall have, what's ever say? I've been saying something for about a month now. I ain't seen it happen. And today I almost gave up. Today, on the way to work, I almost gave up speaking on that thing. I said, well, I'm going to leave it alone because it ain't going to happen. That devil is a lie. It is going to happen. Shama. Glory to God. And it's going to happen. I shit to call about right now in Jesus' name. Whatsoever I've spoken. I'm going to see the results of what I've spoken because I believe it and don't doubt in my heart it's going to happen. Now, let me show you something else. Therefore, I say unto you, the things soever you desire when you pray, believe you shall receive them, and you shall have them. Did you see that? He said, Jesus said, well, I say this to you. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you're going to receive them, and you shall have them. But watch this now. But watch this now. And when you stand praying, here's what stops us. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have all, if you have something against somebody. If you have it against, not if they got something against you. But you got to forgive them. So I pray right now, every one of the sound of my voice, who have been wrong in any kind of way by anybody, I pray that you learn how to forgive them and just leave it be. If you have all against the praying, you forgive any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, not that with your Father which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. What can stop me from getting what I'm saying? <laughs> What can stop me from my prayers, my prayers being hindered is by not forgiving anyone that has wronged me. Right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for you also. Forgive. I ask that you forgive. For your prayers can be answered. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and keep you. I got to get out of here. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's a bad boy. It don't know what it wants to do.